Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, my third and final guest here on my little Halloween special. Uh, this guy, he, he was known as Andy Barkley in the films Child's Play 1 and 2. Uh, his real name is Alex Vincent, and uh, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so so how the heck have you been? I see you've been uh, you've been very very busy as of late, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean I've been doing pretty good. I I've been making appearances at you know horror conventions and haunted houses and things like that all over the country the past several years. Um, but this time of year, coming into October, is always the busy busy month. So I've been doing some traveling and making some appearances. And you, you were just recently in Indianapolis or Indiana, somewhere around there? Yeah, I did a uh, haunted house called Fright Manor in Indianapolis. And then this past weekend, I was over at Spooky Empire in Orlando, which is like my reg regular show. I do that one every year. And I got a couple more. I'm going to be in Birmingham, Alabama this coming weekend. And then back to Indianapolis for a paranormal conference the following week. Wow, so that... I, that, that uh it gets to be a, a rough little traveling schedule, I'd, I'd say, huh? Yeah, it's fun, though. It's, I like getting out of town and going to meet people that I would never have met otherwise, so it's fun. I saw one YouTube video, I don't know if it was from this year or whatnot, but uh, you've been uh, you've been up my area, not so close, but you uh, Chaska, Minnesota? I've been to Minnesota a few times, yeah. I've done the Crypticon shows over there a couple times. And uh, I think even a, another appearance or two in that area. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that Minnesota even did any type of conventions at all. I'm so used to the stuff up here uh, in northern Minnesota where they, the only type of conventions they do is farming conventions. Yeah. <laughs> well, th there's one in Minneapolis every year called Crypticon. And um, I, I've, they've spread out, actually. They have in a few different cities now. I did one in Kansas City and one in Seattle, but I, I've appeared at two of the ones in Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. How far How far have you uh, got up to Minnesota? Was that the farthest you've been? Uh, yeah, that's the, that's, the far, that's the farthest and coldest I've gotten to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you don't have to deal with any cold weather, although I heard it was like, somebody, I was looking on MSN or whatever that they were saying that it was snowing in Florida or whatever because of the hurricane or something? Or? Uh, not by me, I'm over in Clearwater, I haven't seen any snow. <laughs> yeah, somebody... It's the first day, it does, it's not 80, it's the first day it's not 80 degrees, so oh, far okay. this year, so... Yeah, you're lucky. You get all the nice weather over there besides the uh, freaking hurricanes and all that crap. Yeah. So, uh, in light of, uh, I guess as we get started here, in light of uh, the conventions, how does a, a convention work? Like, how do you, like, does somebody, like, call you that's in charge of it and invite you? Or how does that whole work? Uh, it's been different. Different things have happened over the years. I, I get phone calls sometimes. I get referred to a convention from a different promoter or from friends of promoters sometimes. Uh, and every now and then I, I see one that looks like a lot of fun, and I'll send out a message to them, see if they're interested in having me. It's a combination of each of those things leads to getting me to one of these shows. And, like, what's the farthest you've ever had to travel to, to go to a convention? Uh, I did a week-long appearances in Japan a few years ago. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's, that's pretty yeah. far. That's pretty far. Uh, I went out there. I, I've, I've made some appearances in Germany and England and throughout the United States. I mean, Seattle. I'm in Florida. Seattle's the furthest. Um, not so much on the West Coast, though. California is not really too big for horror conventions. Yeah. I mean, you could, run, you could run into Brad Pitt at Starbucks. So <laughs> horror conventions don't work that well in that area. But. Huh. Yeah, I'm surprised that, they, you know, like, I live two hours away from a town called, uh, or a city called Grand Forks, North Dakota. I'm sure you've heard of North Dakota, well, obviously you've heard of the state of North Dakota before, but Grand Forks is a pretty big city. I'm surprised they don't do any uh, type of conventions over there at, the, like, the Fargo Dome or Alaris Center. They might, they might. I don't know about and you haven't heard about. It's possible. There, there's small type of shows everywhere. I mean, there's, there's a handful of really big ones that are well-known. Throughout the country, a couple up in the New Jersey, New York area, that's big. Um, this one in Florida that I do every year, Spooky Empire, is big. But but there's a lot of little small ones in different places that, you know, I've gotten to appear at pretty random cities that I never thought I'd even be in in my life and probably never would have been if it weren't for, you know, some sort of event that they're having. Sure. Uh -huh. 
No, no. When you go to these conventions, uh, like how, like, do you get paid to to go to these, or do they pay for your travel, or how how are you able to afford to uh, go from place to place? Well, I mean, yeah, they pay for flight and hotel, generally speaking. Okay. And, and like most of the celebrities at these conventions, we sell autograph photos and sign DVDs and sign. You know, we charge for that, so that's what where we get the money and where it makes it uh, possible to leave sunny Florida and head to freezing cold Indianapolis to a haunted house for, for the weekend. <laughs> it's fun. We enjoy meeting people. I mean, I can speak for myself. I enjoy meeting people. I, I like going to new places, but we certainly make money doing it. I suppose a lot of people will remember you from the days of uh, the Child's Play series. Pretty uh, much. Pretty much, that's the only thing they know me from. <laughs> so, how come you uh, like like before we really talk about child's play? How come you never uh, made your career go any farther, like doing commercials or doing other other big name movies or anything? Did well, I did a bit when I was young, but between the ages <clears throat> of five and thirteen, I'd done several commercials, and I was on a soap opera for a while, and I did a couple other low budget independent films. And Child's Play just happens to be the only thing that anyone really saw and remembered. Um, but when I was 13, around that age, I have been auditioning for seven, eight years of my childhood, three or four times a week after school, getting in the car, driving into New York, being driven into New York City to uh, audition and then going back home and memorizing more lines for my next audition. And you just, you grow up pretty fast and uh, you start to miss some things that are probably pretty important for someone that age. Sure. And I, I think I just got, for the most part, I just got tired of doing that. Of I just wanted to do regular things. I wanted to play baseball. I wanted to hang out with friends, do things that really, when you're working as a child, you don't get a chance to do those things. Yeah, I suppose uh, uh, it would interrupt your childhood while most kids just get, you know, don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I probably, I mean, I also wasn't getting much at that point. You know, you go through some awkward stages um, as you're getting older, and, you know, the, the cute six-year-old kid thing didn't work anymore, and it's not always based on how well of a read you give at an audition, but the look that they're going for, and I started to just not get work that much, and when you're not getting any anything for a while, it makes the uh, sacrifices that you have to you know, yeah. put yourself through to be in that business makes that a little more difficult to deal with. Um, and I never wanted to move to California when I was young. And in retrospect, I'm glad really that I didn't. I think growing up in New Jersey and not um, in Hollywood really helped me be a re more of a real person, you know? Sure. Um, so, but who knows? Who knows what, what could have gone differently? And there's still some opportunities in the future. I've been doing a lot more um, things from a creative standpoint, writing and writing screenplays and trying to pick a film that I wrote and doing a little bit of directing and editing and music engineering and audio mixing and oh, so you, stuff on that side of, the side of things. So a little bit of everything, more or less. You, you, you're trying to be pretty uh, creative, so to speak. Well, I, I mean, I don't try to be creative. I'm a creative person. And yeah. I'm just tr trying to not be lazy about it as of late. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, that's cool. How, uh, like, have you ever done anything, like, with radio at all or anything like that? Um, as far as what? Well, like, like, your radio interviews or, like, ever tried to get yourself out there, like, like, I don't know, like, say if you were, like... Like, start, like start a morning show or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, not really. I mean, I went to school for audio engineering at Full Sail in uh, Orlando, and I went. Uh, the degree I have is in recording arts, which really opens up a lot of possibilities. I could have, I could probably pursue a similar job of working in a radio state. I don't think I'd want to be an on-air personality so much, um, but anything's possible. Yeah, I guess you, you just never know. But, yeah. uh, so how, uh, so then after you, uh, you did Child's Play, then, uh, like, uh, what was your teenage years like, like after you, uh, finally, uh, got done with the, the, the acting and more of that? Well, like, I never really did get very good at baseball. Okay. <laughs> no, I, it, it 
lives a normal life for the most part. You know, like growing up, I lived in a small town with about you know seventy, eighty kids in your year at school. And sure. when we finished eighth grade, there's to go to high school. You have to move to into a bigger town. I, I grew up actually in Maywood, New Jersey. It's a really small town, one square mile, and the closest town to that is Hackensack. Okay. And I went to Hackensack High School, and when I go there, that's four different towns, people that didn't know me the whole years of being in, in the movies, and all come together in this school. So that was really the beginning of accepting a lot of attention that I got for the, you know, from people my age. Growing up, people didn't mention it that much because they knew me before and during and after. And when I got to this school, then that's when it became, you know, getting called Chucky all the time, stuff like that, yeah. but uh, that's all right, it's all part of it. I think I think social media now has really taken a big role, like 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 Facebook and all that, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, bringing people together to do these uh, conventions, or just uh, uh, hear what, what fans have to think about uh, the horror industry, or, or just anything, I think social media has really definitely played a big role in helping people get to where they want to be, so to speak. Well, Absolutely. I mean, especially a, a business that is uh, successful based on meeting people and get sharing interactions with people that you're familiar with from film or, or music or whatever the case may be. Um, social media really has opened up all kinds of opportunities to get closer to you know, celebrities, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I mean, for me, when I started doing conventions... Eight years ago, you know, it was MySpace and messages that I got through stuff like that that really made me aware that these things were going on to begin with. I was in, uh, you know, I grew up in New Jersey in Chiller Theater. There's a huge convention there that was going on for years before I ever even knew about it. Um, yeah, and then you're you're close to New York City too. I'm sure. So you, I'm sure if there's anything you wanted to do, you could, you could have done it in New York. Yeah, that's true as well. So, uh, I was looking on your Wikipedia thing, and, and I know Wikipedia sometimes isn't always up to date on what they write, but, because it's like, I think, I don't know if it's still user active or whatever, but anyway, it says here on, on your page that you were in a movie or you did a cameo, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it says On the Ropes last year? Yeah, that's, it was a really small thing, it's like a, I did it from home, it was a prank call, oh. um, on this British comedy. <laughs> Uh, and I was a fan of comedy. I've, uh, funny enough, with all these horror conventions that I do, I'm really not a fan of horror films. I haven't seen most of them. I, I know the people from meeting and at conventions, like the guests, over and over again, but I've never seen their films. But if it's comedy, I've probably seen it and have memorized most of it. And, um, yeah, this is just a funny funny script. These guys out in the UK. And, uh... I recorded it and sent it out there, and I think people are seeing it now. Oh. I haven't gotten a copy of it yet. Okay. So, so then, uh, if, if if comedy is is your uh, motif, like, uh, who were some of your favorite actors uh, and actresses growing up in the comedy well, genre? Well, I mean, when I was young, first of all, the first person that I really loved was Michael J. Fox because of the Back to the Future movies. Oh yeah. And Family Ties, and um, when I was making Child's Play two, I was fortunate enough to be able to go and walk over to his trailer. I was introduced to him and I got to sit with him for lunch and I walked through the set of Back to the Future and sat in the actual DeLorean on the set and everything. Jeez, lucky. That was, like, <laughs> the, biggest, that was the biggest thrill of my life. And then, um, you know, growing up I used to watch Saturday Night Live a lot. That kind of humor I loved all, I loved oh, all yeah. stuff. Especially in the, uh, you know, uh, Dan Carvey, Mike Myers, Chris Farley. Sure, was, that that era. Yep. Yeah, and I, I was fortunate enough, again, to be able to be invited to watch the taping of the show from the green room. And, um, and yeah, I got to meet a bunch of people. I was a huge fan of Dan. Dan Carvey was always my favorite. I did most of his impressions, and uh, I got to meet him there and did my impressions back and forth with him. <laughs> uh, it was really fun. Oh, that's cool. No, you know, like, like for myself, I, I've, I've always like besides Michael uh, J. Fox and whatnot, but Michael Keaton and like John Candy and Bill Murray were always the three that I always enjoyed. Yeah, I loved John Candy and his movies. 
Um, he always cracked me up. I mean, they all did. I, I grew up. I grew up watching comedy. Yeah, you know, and I like I like horror films to an extent. I like the ones that make you think. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm more. Um, the gore doesn't really do anything for me. Sure. But a psychological thriller and something suspenseful can still be categorized as horror because you know it, it, you do get scared. Um, that I can enjoy. So like. Uh... Like uh, when it when it comes to the, the child's play movies, now I, I I noticed that you weren't in the third one. Why why was that? I wasn't in the third one because they wanted to make it you know two years later, and they wanted the character to have a love interest and be in military school. Uh-huh. And I was only ten at the time. Uh huh. So they just went with an older actor to play Andy. Okay, yeah, because he seemed like he was a lot a lot older. All of yeah. a sudden, <laughs> yeah, there was a big jump there. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say a ten-year-old love interest would probably not be a good idea, not in film anyway. <laughs> but uh, uh, other than that, uh, uh, how can people, if people want to buy an autograph picture from you, or or just uh, talk to you on Facebook or whatever? How do uh, I know you have a website? So you want to let people know it? Uh, I do have a website. It's alexvincentonline.com. There's a <clears throat> there's a store up there that you can buy autograph photos and stuff like that. And also there's a, uh, an appearances tab. You can go to that and see where I'm going to be. If there's any convention that I have coming up, I try to keep it updated on there. And there's some poetry on there that I've written and audio samples and remixes, and Nine Inch Nails remixes. And there's a bunch of things, all everything that I could fit on that web, cheap website. And uh, the last, I guess the last question I have for you before I let you go is, uh, since you were a, an actor, I, I ask this to a lot of people who uh, do stuff in the entertainment industry, what advice would you give to somebody who would want to become an actor? Whether they're a childhood actor or an actor right now, or, you know, as an adult, what advice would you give? Um, <clears throat> well, you know, my perspective really is it was something that I did when I was young and I got tired of the struggle to be an actor you know as a kid it's different but at some level it's the same it's a really big struggle to be an actor and then if you are lucky enough to be successful that comes with its own new set of difficulties um so it's it's a tough business but it would have to be something that you're obviously really really passionate about or you wouldn't you know it's not, it's not the type of profession you can just go into to try to get rich. It takes a lot more work than that. And, you know, for me, the, these conventions are, when I go to these shows and I get treated like a celebrity, when in my normal day, my normal life, I'm really not at all. I don't get recognized. Um, I can only imagine how more fame and more success that would, you know, translate to the rest of your life it's uh, it seems like a lot more to think about than just i want to be an actor sure all right uh i guess i got one one bonus question here for you since uh, i forgot the fact that we're doing a halloween special here uh what are your, some of your memories from halloween yeah. from just uh halloween from alone halloween? yeah yeah i uh i didn't dress up for very long <laughs> i gave up on it pretty soon but i can say that when I was out in um, California making Child's Play 2, we were shooting during Halloween, and I took a Chucky mask from the set and Chucky clothes, <laughs> and I went out trick-or-treating as, like, the most official-looking Chucky <laughs> Halloween costume ever. Uh, that was fun. So those are some of your Halloween memories, not, not no big memories from uh, the last 30 years of your life besides that one? Not really. I don't get trick-or-treaters too often where I, <laughs> I don't go trick-or-treating myself so so what are your plan what are your you know, plans for this for me, halloween? You know what halloween is for me halloween is the time of year that i get to travel a lot and go to a bunch of conventions okay and you know halloween kind of gets extended through most of my life if halloween means blood and gore and costumes that could happen in February in Kentucky at one of my appearances, too, so. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, sir, Alex. I appreciate, you know, it really uh, really was worth worth it, I, I, I would say, to, to have a chance to chat with you and 
get to know about you, other than just your child, uh, pl child's play career, but just, you know, you as a person, you know, because I'm sure you get uh, asked the same questions over and over again. So I kind of wanted to mix it up with maybe some questions you would get asked here and there. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. And uh, you have a good Halloween, and uh, thanks again for letting me interview you. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, bye.